after missing out on the leadership in 2005. Last time I spoke to him, it was 5am, the morning after the big night before. Good morning, Liam. <laughs> Good morning. This time I've just had to make a sprint from College Green. Well, <laughs> you were on the telly over my shoulder just now, and now I'm talking to you, which is great. <laughs> so um, you've been doing the rounds this morning. So can we take it that you have officially thrown the Dr Liam Fox hat into the ring? Well, I will be later on this morning, yes. And what will you do? Bells, whistles, dancing girls, how does it work? Uh, what happens is that we simply have to have a letter uh, of nomination signed by the candidates plus uh, uh, some other MPs and that goes to the 1922 committee and then at 12 o'clock they will tell us who the actual candidates are and of course we don't know how many candidates there are going to be. There have been so many rumours swirling around Westminster about the number of candidates uh, who might be standing but uh, we'll know soon enough. And when I spoke to you on Friday morning you were still fully backing David Cameron. Obviously a couple of hours later that fully changed. So um, the decision to stand, has that been one that you've thought long about? Well, I had hoped that there would be a much longer gap between the referendum and having to have this leadership contest. I would have welcomed David Cameron staying on for some time. And I went to see him myself, in fact, and said that, uh, that he had, if he wanted to stay, you know, he would have my backing and that of many others. But clearly he took the decision that he felt his position was undermined by the referendum result. And I think that's the key point at which we find ourselves now. I think people, uh, whichever side they were on, have a certain sense of feeling bruised and uncertain about the future and what they what they need to have is is some optimism uh, and some confidence and some hope for the future that this is not a, a major problem for our country this is a major opportunity for our country and on that basis do you think it should only be people who backed to leave the european union who should be considered as the next leader and prime minister be considering what faces them over the next couple of years well, I think it's an advantage to have been on the Leave side because I think that it would have credibility with our own public in terms of the negotiations that we'll have to undertake and probably more credibility with those that we'll be having those discussions with uh, from our European partners if people believe that those in those negotiations were genuinely committed to it. But I don't think it's impossible. There are many other issues, of course, we want to discuss during this leadership contest. I'll be wanting to talk about you know, the things that I've campaigned on for many years on health care and issues like mental health and, uh, and what we do in terms of security. So it won't be a one-issue uh, contest, but I think you're right that it will be much easier for someone to lead the country who was actually in tune with the country's decision. The bookies have you at 16 to 1, so really more, almost outsider territory. Are you confident that you could beat, say, for example, Boris Johnson or Theresa May, both of whom we are assuming are going to do what you're doing today and stepping forward? Well, I think that um, it's up for, to us all to set out our, our case. I mean, I have huge admiration for Stephen Crabb, who announced his candidacy yesterday. He's a very old friend of mine. Theresa May and I have been friends for years and worked together in government. Boris I campaigned with during the referendum that was never a dull experience and uh, you know I think that we should have this uh, contest with courtesy and civility um, but I think it is important that we are setting out clear programs the public will want to know what they're going to get because this is not a contest that's been carried out in opposition it's for government and, and from my point of view there is a West Country angle to this I think that we need to have the areas outside London properly represented in fact during the referendum, when you listened to the pollsters and, and the bookmakers that you referred to, uh, you'd have thought there was no Britain outside the M25 and it's time that we made that very loud and clear. On the show yesterday, I asked Radio Bristol listeners if you would make a good Prime Minister and there was a lot of support from you, particularly as you would expect from your North Somerset constituents. You, you've been there a long time, but there was some consideration and, and, and comments raised about whether someone who had to resign from their job as Defence Secretary, as you did in somewhat controversial circumstances, whether you could now be considered to lead the country. How would you respond to those people? Well, I think that we all make mistakes, and uh, I think when you do make mistakes, you make an apology, you make amends if you can, and then you try to learn from the experience. And I, I learned that not in politics, but I learned that in, in, in medicine, that uh, no one is going to get through a career without making mistakes, and if you do make mistakes, try and learn from them so that you can put that to good use later on. I hope I've done that, um, and uh, in the time that I wasn't in, in, in government, uh, I set out 
about my my views in a, in a book called Rising Tides, which was very well received. I also set up a, a charity that I felt was very important. And I hope I put my time there to good use. And, and I think it's been a useful learning experience for me. And, you know, anyone that thinks you can get through life without making a mistake, I think, is in living on a different planet. Makes it hard, though, if you go up against someone with a, a squeaky clean sheet. Well, I think pub the public like uh, to have their politicians with a bit of uh, humility and uh, a bit of humanity. I think in this contest, the fact that I come from a, a career outside politics it is a help. I think people like to know that the politicians have done something other than live in the Westminster uh, bubble. And I think that, that that all contributes. And people will make their own judgment. And I hope they'll make the judgment on the views that I set out and the sort of Britain I want to see and the sort of world I want to influence. If you were to become leader and prime minister, uh, would you consider a general election? No, I don't think we need another referendum. I don't think we need another general election. I don't think we need another Scottish referendum. I think we need to get on with the business of government. In terms of European policy, the public have given us a clear and unequivocal instruction. As Democrats, we should follow it. It's not for us to reinterpret it in any way. And in terms of the challenges we face in the global economy, um, I think we've got plenty of work to do without the distractions of further polls. OK, I'll let you get to your next interview. Thank you for your time. One, one more only, but thank you very much. <laughs> Dr Liam Fox there, a Conservative MP for North Somerset, who later today will officially uh, put, put forward his um, his position on standing for the next Conservative leader and, of course, Prime Minister. That happens officially later today. John Darvill's here.